What's going on you glorious sim racers out there? Today we are going to do the 2019 Rig Tour. This is the current setup that I am using. I have been using it for uh, late 2018 and um, well actually the motion rig has been used through uh, for a year now. But uh, this is the setup that I just rearranged in my room here. Uh, hopefully this gives you some ideas of what to do for your setup. Uh, inspires you to advance your hobby into what you really want it to be. So this is the nice thing about sim racing is you can convert it to be whatever your dreams are. So uh, it I had started off with really started off with wheels that you had to kind of that were flared at the bottom uh, to where you'd put it underneath your legs and hold it uh, together on the couch and with a pedal uh, on the floor that generally slid away from me as I was trying to break and stuff. So I evolved from that, from in my earlier uh, teens to, uh, you know, adulthood now and, uh, you know, 47. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's come along quite a bit uh, through the years here. And this is what I've ended up with so far. So uh, moving on here, let's just dive into this bad boy here. Uh, and we'll start from the back end of everything here and we'll work our way forward. So what we get our driving action with these Goodyear shoes. Now everything that I talk about is up on my YouTube channel. And uh, you can check out the individual reviews for everything there. And uh, going forward. So use those driving shoes. Love them. Work great. Uh, everything is laying on top of a next level racing mat there. Which I, uh, I like. Keeps it nice and tidy. And helps me center up where I want to put my rig as well because I can lay down the mat and figure out where I really want things. Uh, but that is what's going on. So back here we're going to start off with the motion rig. This is the GT Ultimate Next Level Racing V3 rig. I love this thing. Uh, man, you know, it doesn't even look like much setting here. You know, it's 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 just an addition. It's It's very modular. You can hook it up to pretty much any rig you want to of course they sell their own their own rigs and and you can use theirs as well uh, but this is how I have it currently right now and I have it married up to my Symantec K2 rig over there now for this seating business here I got uh, you know two transducers in the back and I also have two in the front using powering those is these Dayton's these uh, those is the APA 150s uh, amp. I don't think that came in focused quite right, but that's what I'm using the power of the four transducers. I used to have six transducers, but I find with this motion rig here, you really don't need all those transducers. Uh, I really just need them to feel the the engine vibrations. Really, are are the fronts I use them for the shock value as far as uh, suspension bumps and stuff uh, for the front end. So. Uh, yeah, you can actually get away with a lot less transducers when you have motion rig. So going on up here, we on the back end, I got hanging on these nice little sticky hangers. Uh, they actually work really good, kind of like, um, um, like a headphone hanger or something like that. Links below. I'm using my AccuForce V2 Pro wheel setup, and I'm using the Sam Maxwell magnetic shifters with the upgraded magnets in there. Oh, man, I love that thing. It works really, really well, just like the AccuForce wheel itself. Going on down, what I set in is a Momo seat. The model number escapes me, but this thing is awesome. And it is mounted to, with, rather, a Sparco seat adjuster here. I don't use sliders on my seats because when you use motion, they tend to come unhinged. <laughs> and push you forward and stuff so they're just uh, that'll make i haven't found the low-end sliders as far as low-end 30 50 dollar sliders to uh keep me in place plus you always get just a slight little motion back and forth with sliders and i really don't like that it definitely takes you out of the immersion factor so i like a hard back seat with no sliders and i just set it where i want it uh i'm generally the only person ever using this thing uh so everything's set to the length i want i set it and forget it and don't have to worry about it so uh going on into the inside here 
with the Momo, you will see that it has some really nice bolstering back there, three levels, and you got some side bolsters here for your, you know, your helmet restraints rather. And oddly enough, these are actually, you know, you wouldn't think you'd need them for sim racing. However, when you're using something like the Oculus Rift S that I have right there on the wall um, for the VR needs, I also use the Samsung Odyssey, but the Rift S is taking over my VR duties as of as of lately and uh, yeah when you're sitting in a GT3 car and this motion is rocking you around in it you tend to get thrown around in your seat a little bit and it's really cool because you see if you were to look over to your left or right in the motion you, you see these side bolsters of those seats and so you know they're there in your space and then to get hit <laughs> by your own seat in the real world uh, is just a really cool immersion factor so i do recommend any kind of seat that has these side head restraints uh, when you're using vr because it just adds a, just an extra layer of immersion that you would not normally thought of so yeah really cool um this seat fits me really well it broke in really well it was a little tight in the beginning but uh after some use it has came in to its own and uh, so I did find that the only thing I needed was a little bit better lower lumbar uh, support so I added that OMP right there and uh, that's what I use also for the driving business here I use these Spark Sparco hyper, gl hyper grip gloves really like these I'll probably do a review on these pretty soon here I've been using them for four or five months well, about five months now and uh, just putting them through their paces and really wanted to see if they were out. And uh, so really great gloves. I did have a couple issues with them uh, that I'll cover in my review. But yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So uh, going on forward here, of course, it's sitting on the next level racing mat. I do have, of course, a video up on how to marry this Symmetech K2 rig to the next level racing rig. There is my Symmetech K2. You can actually convert the rear section of the Cimitec to house the Next Level Racing Motion uh, motor. However, I did not choose to do that because I did want to cut up the rear section of the rig to enable that to happen. Uh, because I may convert this over to a static rig later on as I upgrade in the future again. Because uh, I'm looking at the Traction Plus setup that next level racing is coming out with which will of course i will need a whole new rig set up for that so but going forward this is what we got and i'm really really digging it and highly recommend it so Symantec k2 stan you know reviews and stuff are up obviously on the uh well not obvious but it's up there on the site on the channel uh i got everything mounted to that and using accuforce v2 pro kit i have my accuforce uh you know motor box power box back there with the kill switch or power switch up here i did actually have it mounted up to my table at one time uh, but it became a pain to actually reach over when you're sitting in here and reaching over the monitor because my power cable had to be back there uh end up being a pain to have to reach so far because sometimes i'd be in my headset already and forget about it <laughs> forget to turn on the motor so uh, this is nice and convenient, plus everything is compact into one setup, no wires dangling in a bunch of different places. I have everything mounted in here as a complete unit so I can remove this when I want to. Uh, I got me, uh, you know, of course, USB 3.0 hubs there, as well as right there. This is a seven port one right there. And I just plug them into the little hubs that I have there. So all I have to do when I want to remove this rig is unplug uh, this this power wire that powers the hub, and then this data cable for it, as well as this one here, and just the power cord and the USB cable for this for the motion rig, and then slide the whole unit out and uh, for maintenance or cleaning or whatever. So uh, really handy and uh, yeah, really like that. So moving on, DSD button boxes right there. I had designed up my own custom DSD or my own custom button box holder there because in the past I have had a problem where I'd rest my hand on it when I was using the V2.5 um, Fanatec 
uh, with the uh, kit that held these button boxes in, the DSD button boxes, being that it was a plastic fiberglass setup uh, where it mounted, I would crack the mounts because I was just resting my hand on here. I'd bump it or I'd bump it getting out of my chair and I would snap them. Well, you can see I can bang this thing around pretty hard. Ain't nothing snapping off because it is quarter inch aluminum plate. So that's what I designed up for this. Didn't buy anybody else's. It was much less expensive. I think I only spent $100 between materials and machining to design my own. So, you know what? I encourage you to do your own as well. Uh, come up with your own designs. Uh, this is all one piece instead of two pieces. Uh, so the structural integrity is quite high. And I did a nice carbon fiber wrap on the outside. Left the, the uh, aluminum finish on the edges, mainly because it was easy, plus aesthetically it looked pretty cool. The button boxes are actually just uh, stuck in there. You can hot glue them in there if you wanted to, uh, or you can uh, double side sticky tape like I did for that. But yeah, it works good. Uh, I could have made the box a little bit smaller and drilled holes into the plate itself, but this is the route I went with. I was a little bit in a hurry to do it, so uh, yeah. Anyway, it worked out good. Of course, you know, the AccuForce v2 reviews are up on that as well on the channel love it highly recommend it let's move on down to the pedals here pedals here we are using the fanatec club sport v2s and uh man those things are baller man they work really good high high degree of of fidelity in them as well as strength if you're someone that likes a light pedal you'll like these uh, they they can be pretty light as far as pedals go as far as the brake pedals that is uh, You can keep it nice and light, but if you're like me, and you want something heavier uh, Install the brake kit. I, I recommend the brake kit. The brake kit actually makes these very stiff uh, brake pedals and uh, Yeah, really cool stuff. So Moving on past that you'll see the subwoofer back there and that is to the Corsair 2.1 surround sound system that I use and uh, there's the controller for it and works really good. Uh, you can't actually even buy that anymore, uh, which is unfortunate because it is a really good sound system, uh, minimal space and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I used to actually have my PC over there to the side here and now I slid up everything underneath here and showing you the wires, if you'd see the first video up that of, of my channel of my rig tour which is a few years back. Uh, this has changed quite a bit. Uh, of course, minimal wires here, uh, these little hangers here to hold all the wires together. I don't like wires, so I kept everything very minimal. Uh, Bluetooth uh, where I could or wireless where I could and moved on from there. Again, we'll move on, or moving forward rather, let's move on to the shifters. The shifters is uh, my shifter setup right now is using the AO logs, and this is the sequential shifter. Love that thing. Uh, very tactile feeling. View up, of course. I also use the handbrake, and I have the Husenfeld uh, handbrake as well. Love that as well. Uh, I actually use both of these. Sometimes I'm feeling a little lazy, and I want a little bit of a lighter pull, and I'll use this one. Uh, but then when I'm wanting to fill a, uh, a higher end pool, I will use this one, which I'm only using the white grommet here. I used to use the, you can even make that even heavier of a pool than it is now. Uh, but yeah, I use both, uh, oddly enough, uh, whenever, whatever suits my needs, whatever I am in the mood for uh, that particular day when I'm driving. So it's great to have variety. So yeah, moving on. So, you know, to control all this, to fire up, the PC end of things, that is my custom built PC uh, with a uh, thermal take View 71 case. I love that thing. Uh, of course, you know, that's up on the channel as well. Since the initial build, I am now using a RTX, uh, this is Zotax RTX 2080 Ti, which I do recommend that particular graphics card for VR users or 4K screen users. I did use it with my 4K screen for quite a while uh, just to test it out and uh, works really good. It pushes the pixels uh, just fine. So uh, for VR, you can definitely turn up the settings quite a bit more. 
Uh, I did go over a few of the games already with that particular setup, but it looks pretty damn good, I think. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's 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 my little dream PC that I built myself, and uh, turned out really good, I think. So, yeah, moving on. I may start building PCs for people uh, here in the future, that just for sim racing. But you know, I digress. Still in the thought process of that. On the wall here, you will see the Fanatec. This is the McLaren GT3. Man, it, you know, Fanatec knocked it out of the park with this wheel. I really like this wheel. I think it's probably one of their best sellers. But uh, I have it converted over with a BNG setup here. And this is with the, uh, the SRM conversion kit there. Man, they know what they're doing here. Uh, highly recommend uh, if you want to convert any of your your wheels over to uh, be a USB hookup and still have the functionality of all your buttons, go see them. They do excellent work, very clean. And of course, you know, I did a video on how to install all this on the channel. So check it out as well. And of course, I moving on up, got the Momo steering wheel. I like it better. It has a very uh, good deep dish to it. Uh, it puts my placement of my hands to the shifters uh, just in the right spot. My VR knees, of course, are using right now the Rift S, and that's what I use. Love it. Uh, for the money, you cannot go wrong. Review up on the channel. Let's go on to what we use when we play regular games. This is the, well, that's the picture of the uh, 2020 R1M that I am uh, mulling over to get myself, but I can't decide uh, what I'm gonna get yet. But anyway, uh, I digress. I have the Alienware 34 inch monitor. Uh, I did used to have a Predator X34 that I really, really liked, but the display port went out. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about that monitor was the control setup of how to make adjustments. But as you know, once you make adjustments, you kind of set it and forget it. And this one actually, Looks really cool. Uh, the stand's really nice. It's all lit up LEDs back there, that which you can change the colors. I have it just strolling through colors right now. Uh, but just really cool stand. And I could hook it up to the vase mount right there, but I chose not to because, for one, I like the stand. It looks really cool. Uh, two, I really use VR most of the time. And... Uh, this is really used for playing like games like Dirt Rally 2.0 and uh, and The Division and Call it you know not really Call of Duties but Battlefields stuff like that. So uh, yeah, this is where I leave it on the stand. But for those that want the vase mount, it does work as well. And that is the one I use. Now this is a 120 hertz monitor. I did the Predator X34 version I had was 100 hertz. Oh, man, you can definitely tell the extra 20 hertz which was odd i didn't think i'd be able to tell it but i always thought 120 hertz would be the sweet spot and uh got it proven out correct that is the sweet spot i think for sim racing uh to not uh, have to have such a high-end video card uh, but uh still have some really good fast action on screen so let's move on past that as far as the sound goes as well i use the astro a50s uh, that's in PC and PS4. That's why I have that particular one. They work good, sound good. Have a little bit of a, a dropout uh, for the Bluetooth part, or not the Bluetooth, but the connectivity drops out on me sometimes. But I have recently updated the firmware and it seemed to fix most of those issues. Now, the one headset I really like the most is the Sennheisers. These are the HD 598s. You can still find them up on the website, on, on the Amazon and stuff. But these are wired. And, of course, you can plug the wire into your, your Rift headset if you wanted to. However, I plug it into my Corsair because I like to crank up the volume. And, uh, yeah, those will fit over your headset really well. Uh, so I do recommend those 598s. You can find them up on Amazon as well. Of course, back there, the rest of the business is just some odd in wires and stuff that i use to charge things like the keyboard and stuff uh, another camera right there new hd camera that i have uh, with the elite controller for the console type gaming got the uh 
another Logitech Brio. That's for my 4K filming. Don't have no wires plugged in right now because I move these things around quite a bit. And coming on over here, we've got the Corsair K63 keyboard, wireless keyboard, and the Corsair Harpoon mouse. Really enjoying these. Works really good for sim racing needs, and the batteries last a really long time. Now, what these are setting on top of are, or is, Next Level Racing keyboard and mouse stand, which the review is up on the channel. Highly recommend this stand for those that uh, need a separate stand if your rig doesn't offer it, which my Semitech K2 rig did offer it, but however, since I moved my PC over there, I couldn't utilize the keyboard stand and I really had a very flimsy setup for my mouse stand. Uh, so this is just, this is thing is awesome. It really holds everything nice and together. Uh, it doesn't move around. It doesn't drop things off. It's just very, very sturdy. 13 pounds, I believe, is what it is uh, without the mouse and keyboard. So yeah, highly recommend the Next Level Racing products as well. So... That is it. I hope you enjoyed it. I think I covered everything in my review in my 2019 rig tour here. Uh, really enjoy this setup. Definitely makes it nice to come home and and, and uh, bang out some gears and sim racing. So yeah, reviews are up on just about everything that you see here. Check it out. Hopefully, it inspire you to advance your rig as well. And check out my affiliate links. Don't forget to subscribe and tick the notification for more videos coming your way so you can keep up with what's going on here at Track Junkie Racing. So, till next time, I'll see you on the track. I'm out.